The other day somebody asked me about relationships and how do they know if that's the one? How do they know if this person is going to be suitable? And while I can't say that I've done everything perfectly, I feel like I have some ideas that I'd like to share with you. So if you give me five or so minutes, I'd love to give you five things that will help you to know if this person might be the one. The first thing, and these are personal to me, these are kind of checkpoints that I used in developing my relationship and deciding to pursue Jamie and also uh, to eventually get married to her. And I feel like they formed a great solid foundation for us in our relationship. The first one is a heart for God. And to make it simple, these questions are here. Does this person love Jesus more than me? And does this person... So, let me explain that. <laughs> does this person love Jesus more than I love Jesus? And does this person love Jesus more than they love me? And so, you get to see that when a person shows with their time and with their money and with what they do with their life, what aspirations they have. If God is first in their life, above you, above anything else that's in their life, you know that everything else has the chance to work out because if they're willing to follow God no matter what he says, they're not going to be prone to wandering astray. They're not going to be prone to, um, uh, to putting you above God. And when they do that, they can hear directly from God for what the relationship needs. I've just found it to be so much healthier. Do they love God more than they love me? And do they love God more than I love God? First of all is that. The second of all is conversation. I've realized that in so much of my relationship with Jamie, uh, it's been such a big blessing to me just to have good conversations with her. The other night we sat across the table and just talked about a bunch of different stuff that was going on. Big, heavy, deep, real stuff and just fun, friendly stuff too. We can have conversations about music. We can have conversations about food. We can have conversations about all kinds of different stuff. And being able to have those kinds of conversations has really blessed us in our relationship. Can you have deep conversations at your level with this person? And so you might think about education uh, or culture or language. What kinds of things might affect the conversation? And do you know how to work through those things? The third one is values. Do we have a similar values set? Uh, do we see the world in a similar way? Not that we're going to agree on everything, but for example, do we agree that tithing 10% is a bare minimum standard? If we agree on values like tithing, then it's going to make some of the decisions a whole lot easier. To be honest, Jamie and I didn't fight that much before we got married. We didn't hardly have any difficult interactions and we were able to sort through the disagreements that we had. But after we had kids, things are totally different. And um, I realized that as we've had to process through how we're going to raise the kids and how we're going to deal with uh, some of the difficult things that they do and the way that we have to interact with them, having a similar value system has been so helpful. And so choosing someone that has similar values is just really really fantastic and the fourth one is relationships does this person like how does this person treat the relationships around them their parents their friends the people that they're ministering to their co-workers their classmates how do they treat these people because the way that they treat their parents and the way that they treat their friends is often going to be the way that they're going to treat you don't expect to change them once you're in the relationship or once you're married. People aren't really necessarily going to change that much from before and after marriage. And so getting to be with someone who treats those relationships with honor and respect and decency is such a huge and valuable thing. The last one is pretty straightforward. Are they hot? Are you attracted to them physically? I don't think that's everything, and that fades away too, which is why the other four are so important. But what I've personally seen is that uh, if those first three especially are not intact, 
then it's going to be difficult when you get to four because there will be disagreements, there will be struggles. And at number five, there will be temptations. Um, there will be other people that someday might look more attractive. But I've been so blessed to be able to be with such an amazing woman. And, and in the midst of different temptations that have come, in the midst of different struggles that have come, I've really been able to stand strong because I know that heart for God. And I know those deep conversations and relationship that we've built. I know the values that undergird, that are the foundation of what we're moving into and what we're building together. And I've just, we've got this amazing thing going. So I want to encourage you because I know that it's possible. I know that there's someone out there who can meet these five for you. And I know that you can become someone who meets these five for someone else. So I challenge you, is God first in your life? Have you surrendered to him in everything? Are you becoming the kind of person who can have deep, meaningful conversations? Are you able to have fun? Are you developing your values and being able to articulate them clearly? Are you someone uh, who treats other people with respect and knows how to have healthy boundaries in relationships with people? And finally, are you taking care of yourself physically and in all those other ways? Treat yourself kindly. And I trust that God is going to bring the right partner along and you'll know how to move ahead in that relationship. God bless you and have an amazing day.